We have launched. It's the 22nd of March and Seahorse is sailing again. Um, we launched yesterday. Ian and I took her for a quick sail, like just an hour, just to shake everything down. Um, and then today we've got Izzy on board. Um, the tide is ripping. It's a six metre tide. Um, coming in and we're trying to go that way so we're fighting against the tide at the moment five knots of true wind boat speed is four knots at the moment with a two meter depth we only draw 1.8 though i've only just seen that <laughs> be fine anyway it's coming in float again soon There's our daughter, same position she's been in since she was about three. But for now she's got her own 4G tablet and phone. 1.9 metres of water, oh back to two and we draw 1.8. Nothing like getting right into East Coast sailing on your first sail is there? got the river pretty much to ourselves though not many people have launched yet we always try to get seahorse in early just in case you get some nice weather over the Easter So the trick to sailing on a river with a tide to start with is to understand what the tide's doing because um, we, we have got a big tide today, it's six metre tide today and there'll be, even where we are now, there'll be over two knots of tide probably running if you're in the middle of the channel. So um, like on our river where we sail at say five knots, that's the difference between say taking two hours to get to the end of the river and th over three hours to get to the end of the river. So it makes a big difference. So um, the trick is, is the tide's fastest in deep water and conventional wisdom anyway will have the fact that the tide is fastest on the outside of a bend. In practice, certainly on our river, it's never as straightforward as that. Um, but the shallow water is true. Um, so for example, we've just sailed up along here, up past Gillingham. We've sailed up alongside all this mud here in a couple of metres of water because over there, it's 10 metres of water and the tide will be much stronger. Um, then, when we get to this bend, we'll have to decide where we're going. Because um, the other thing to keep in mind is not only to keep in the shallow water or in the deep water, whatever you want to do, is to keep in the wind. And uh, there's two ways around this next corner. In fact, I'll tell you what, when we get there, I'll explain it. So we're at the bend now, and there's the two deep water channel markers that mark this corner. And then over here is Folly Point that marks the inboard corner. There's um, shallow water inside that, so you're not really meant to go inside it. But shallow water, of course, when you're um, trying to beat the tide, is good. So the normal thing to do here is to stay on this side of the river and cut the corner and stay in the shallow water except a quarter mile further on you've got to make another corner so you can go all the way around the shallow water that's down there and around the outside of the corner which although conventional wisdom will tell you the tide's stronger on the outside in practice it isn't it's very shallow over there and there's a lot of good um, ground to be made up 
and right on this point um, let me zoom in and hold it steady enough right on that corner under that crane the tide rips through there so you have to be quite careful when you're trying to get against it except either side of that point so just under just behind um, this other fault and on the other side of the other fault there's a lot of slack water so you can make big gains going up through that slack water park it on the corner if you haven't got enough wind to get through it and then gains on the other side so sometimes that's actually the better way to go than to go all the way around the outside so there's two ways of taking this corner but the thing that's going to make the biggest decision now is the fact that it's an overly wind today um, and when you get to that corner you have that huge jetty with all those cranes on it which are going to block the wind and of course although tide's important and you want to under, understand it you do want to be in wind you're sailing so given those choices today the best route is probably to cross the river sail down in the slack water area around that fault try and punch through the tide to get around the corner and then carry on the other side because you're furthest from the jetty one other thing that you need to keep in mind when you're trying to sail in the river is like on our river here just the other side of that fault there's a creek that when it's dry there won't be any water going through it so nothing that's going to affect you but as the tide comes in and that floods you'll have an, a, a head tide against you that's coming out of that that's coming out of that creek which will affect you in the same way if I pan round there's an there's another creek that runs through there which again at the moment will be uh, just mud but once that floods there'll be a fluid path going this way it's going to push you sideways so they're all part of the things that make sailing on the river tricky and if the only important factor here was to get down the end of the river I'd be much better off putting the engine on but we come out for a sail and um, as much as cruisy people don't seem to like sailing upwind it's actually the most rewarding part of sailing so um, it's quite enjoyable um, as long as you understand tides if you don't understand tides it get very frustrating very quickly So we went over to the other side as I said but we had to tack because there's even less water than normal because it's such a low tide today um, which means we're coming back over this side to, <coughs> to Folly side um, so this is the next dilemma really we want to be over there but that means lots of tacks and every tack loses your boat lengths in this sort of light wind so sometimes it's better just to push against the tide but to save the tacks um, to build some boat speed and actually make some headway and of course we are making headway because that is Folly Point um, which we were coming up to so um, we are actually uh, getting down the river I was getting nervous, the depth's <laughs> dropping. Green boy now at least. Yeah, we're making headway. So there is one other thing to keep in mind when you're sailing against the tide is that generally speaking the tide 
goes out quicker than it comes in because you have the flow of the river added to the movement of the water um, which also means that the tide can go out at different rates because if you've had a lot of rain like two days before and the, and the you know, ground's sodden it'll, uh, a lot more water's going to rush out with it and that also might mean it holds off the tide that's coming in because if the river flow is strong enough to hold the tide back so the time at which a tide turns and the amount of tide you have isn't as it always isn't always as it's written in the book you do have to um, factor in a lot of local conditions and uh, the situation as well anyway we're making good headway here we're not going to get very far but then it wasn't about going somewhere it was just about enjoying the sail <clears throat> and of course uh, one of the beauties of um, the first sail of the year is the boat is as good as it's going to be that year it's clean it's smooth fresh paint on it there's no barnacles weed anything on it so um she slips along through the water brilliantly so though we only had four or five knots of wind and up to like i say a couple of knots of tide we've still made our way down river here to where the old power station used to be it's good It's recording. It's not my steering, it's the wind. It's all over the place. Of course, this, this is one of the good reasons for coming in the water early. Because you get lovely days like this. And yet today, we haven't seen anyone on the water. We went sailing in January in the freezing cold with Steve. And there was, you know, three or four boats out enjoying the weather. Today, although it's a bit gloomy and overcast, it's not actually that cold. I mean, it's still, you know, it's still March. And um, it's a nice breeze, it's good. As you can tell from the flappy sail, we're going downwind now, which means with the tide. So everything I said about going upwind, just scratch it, reverse it, for going downwind. Of course things are easier going downwind, because all you're doing is adding to your speed. So you either go quick or quicker. When you're going upwind, if you get the tide wrong, you either go slow or stop. There's a big difference. So that's it for this week. The battery went flat on the camera that's on the back of the boat, but of course it didn't take long to get home because the tide swept us all the way back. But for a first day sailing with the boat just back in the water, that was a great morning. Anyway, if you've got this far, thanks for watching. And for those of you that don't know, depending of course on when you're watching this film, Seahorse is for sale. So if you'd like to own the perfect little 29 foot cruising boat, get in touch. Otherwise, we'll see what sailing adventures we get up to next week. <laughs>